I think that's really commendable. And I, and I know on, on any college campus, there's always a, a small percentage of instructors who are interested in doing things like you're talking about. So I, I really applaud people who want to do that. Um, you know, I, I've been thinking about this. I mean, one thing I would suggest would be to start small and to um, look at how you can use just maybe short videos just as an adjunct or as part of your instructional overall instructional program, just how, how you can start to incorporate those. That's, I think, a less painful way to get, get into it and kind of, kind of get some experience with it. So that's one suggestion. And then maybe it's self-serving, but I also would, would suggest taking an evidence-based approach. Um, not just my research, although I think it's good, but, <laughs> but there's lots of research on um, multimedia design that's relevant to, to video. So, um, so some of the things I mentioned, you know, to keep things uh, simple and focused, to place words next to the part of the image that um, they're referring to, to break, break um, a longer lesson into smaller parts. Um, to, uh, the personalization principles t is basically that um, voice can be used to help personalize a lesson and, and that maybe helps the learner feel more of a social partnership in the learning experience and would therefore make them try harder to learn. So um, I would say look at the research evidence on how to design effective um, multimedia and use that as part of you know what you're doing. You know, view view media not uh, not as some sort of magic that's going to cause learning. And you know, uh, the idea is that it's again the instructional method that causes learning. So uh, use, there's nothing magic about using video or using any technology. It's kind of how you use it. So you want to make sure that it's going to serve a specific instructional goal. You should have a specific instructional goal in mind for why you're using a let's say a video segment.